I'm sure this has happened to you. Uh, it's happened to me a number of times where I'll come home and I'll take the pens out of my pocket and what is left in my pocket but that. And it's missing the cap. I hate when that happens. So I looked everywhere where I thought it could be and it might still be in my house somewhere. Um, it could also be in the bar that I was at and I took off my coat or put my coat on or got up to pee and for some reason the cap ended up on the floor. I did call the bar in question to see if anyone found a cap. That's, it is a very embarrassing thing to ask a barkeep. Did you find a wall all metal pen cap in the ripple pattern in your restroom or on the floor? And then you hear silence and then you hear the dial tone because they thought you're a crank caller. Anyway, uh, I also looked in my house thinking that it must have when I was taking these out, I also took the cap and it had unscrewed. That's one of the things about, I don't know if it's common in wall pens or just my wall pens or where maybe I don't screw them down tightly enough so that they can uh, come off. Anyway, this was what was left in my pocket. And of the two parts, if you were going to divide this up into a pen and a cap, uh, this is the important part, especially because I was falling in love with this nib. And this nib is one that I recently, I didn't recently buy it. It was just in a drawer, you know, with other nibs, or not that pile of nibs, but a different pile of nibs. And I thought, God, this is a nice nib. And I swapped it out and put it in a pen. I think one of them that I just got from um, in in LA, but I don't even remember that. Uh, often pens, once they, as Rob Morrison used to call, become absorbed in my collection, uh, they lose their um, what's the word that you use? Starts with a P. <laughs> where you where you talk about you know the how how long has this Rembrandt been in someone's collection? The um, anyway that word, they lose their their pre pre history because they're just mine now. So anyway, look at this. This is what the cap looks like. In case you're walking down the street and you find it, I did. Yes, I did look. Not I didn't go all the way back to the bar and look in every gutter, but I did look uh, for a block and then gave up, figuring that any number of trucks and cars on their commute would have crushed the thing completely. So I now I, I still have, I have one of these barrels without this cap. Anyway, so what am I going to do now? Well, I'm going to make a little drawing. So here, it's, it's, it's this very, very fine nib. I'm about to sneeze. <coughs> Sorry about that. And it's spattering ink, as you can see. And I don't know if it, I, I swapped out I took the nib out of the barrel that it was in and put it in this barrel because this barrel, barrel has a engraving on it and I decided I wanted to keep keep this one and the other one is now capless and this one has a lovely engraving W H filio F I L L I O so I'm drawing 
here, here, here are the mourners. There's, there's, you know, some woman in widow's weeds and weeping, and there's her little son. I should make them look like they actually do, are related. So here's, here's the Fifth Avenue pen. Here's the Skyline pen. And there's me over here. And we're looking at the grave. So R I P. Requiescit in pace. Pacem, whatever it is. So there's rather than a rather than a cross or those crazy things that they put on some things, I'll do a drawing of what the cap would look like. Because this is the part that has gone missing. And this is carved out of stone, of course, some beautiful marble. So maybe they won't bother with the actual pattern on here, which according to Todd Merrill, the expert on these sort of things, is called Ripple. And of course, anyone can find that out, but I'm too lazy to find that out. So there was a time when I was coming back from another bar. Do you, do you sense a uh, pattern here? I was riding my bike home from another bar, got home, uh, decided to unburden myself of all of the pens that were in my pocket and discovered all of them were missing. Not just the caps and the barrels. Well, not just the caps, but every single goddamn thing that was in my pocket. So I got back on my bike and went back to the bar and retraced my steps. And no sooner than even less than a block away, in fact, right across the goddamn street from the bar, I must have gone over a bump in the road because all of them, all of the pens were sitting in the gutter. And it included, you know, a big honkin' Conklin Crescent pen that probably is worth $800 today and a Sterling Waterman overlay and all these other pens, they were just sitting there in the, in the, in the gutter, uh, as yet un, un, uh, crushed by someone else's bicycle or big feet. Uh, this, this nib is amazing and I may try to put it back where it was because it's actually it's actually probably fine the way it is. I don't mind the little specks that happen sometimes, uh, but I can I can certainly fix that. It has this great, very very fine nib. Excuse me for sniffling here. Uh, it just it just wants to make the tiniest little thin lines, and. I had so much fun drawing with it the other day, and then I thought I'd bring it out for a cocktail and ended up on my way home losing the cap. It might be in my house, uh, it might be on the floor, it might be 10 feet away from me. I often find pens, often complete pens, but sometimes I'll see something glitter on the floor and that's a uh, a Waterman number two nib that has yet to be crushed by my big feet. Uh, um, anyway, it's just, at least I have a cap. I'm looking for a cap to match the pen that now is missing a cap. Uh, here's this one. This is a lady's cap. See these, uh, the lady's pen, rather, ring top pen for E C H Anyway anyway, the only pens I've there's one pen I lost in my house somewhere and, and I I've, I've it's been gone missing for a long time and I'm wondering whether 
someone had taken it from me. It was a senior sized Schaefer in red stripe. Carmine, which is a pretty goddamn rare pen. And uh, the and I got it from a friend of mine who wanted a brown one. A brown one was one of the more common colors. And I had a brown one, and he had a red one, and he was very happy to get the brown one. And I, we traded, though I think he ended up getting more than just the brown one. The brown one was something that he had had when he was younger. It might have been belonged to a relative, and he had lost that one, so he wanted a brown one back. Um, Another pen that I do remember losing, and I think I lost it at a flea market, was a more uh, hard rubber, short, short fat pen. Uh, probably a number four nib, might have been a number five nib, but it was it was really quite nice. And I ended up, I got home from the flea market and it was gone. It had been in my pocket, so... Uh, but most of the time I... I do not misplace pens. They're, they're somewhere in my house. So maybe this cap or its twin is in my house somewhere. The end.